there, my name is Lucy Redover and I'm a docent at ISEC, the InfoAge Space Exploration Center. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Christmas star, also known as the Star of Bethlehem in St. Matthew's Gospel. Let's go! Hello there! There are three main ideas for what could be this Christmas star. The first of these is that there was a nova or a supernova explosion. Just to give you a little bit of astronomy lingo, a nova is when a white dwarf would briefly and quickly become very bright, about a thousand times its original luminosity. A supernova is when the core of a star, about 8 to 15 times the size of our sun, will collapse in less than a second and the outer layers of the star are blown off. However, there are not very many records dating from the time of Jesus' birth that suggest this could have happened. There are one or two Chinese records that mention something astronomically happening at the sky at this point, but given that there is no supernova remnant, which we would need to find if there was a supernova, it's guessed that there probably was not a supernova or a nova at this time. Hello there! The second astronomical idea for what the Star of Bethlehem was is a comet. A comet is pretty much a flying space rock made of ice, dust, and rock. In ancient times, when they saw these comets flying through the sky, they called them comets because comets translates to hairy because they saw this strand of hair following behind it. Now, comets are argued to be the Star of Bethlehem because in the Gospel, in some translations, it says the star moved in the direction of the Magi. However, if you consider the Magi were moving to Jesus, as well as the star being in the sky and moving at the same time, it kind of connects, which kind of bunks down this theory a little bit. We have one more to discuss. Let's go. And the last idea for what the Star of Bethlehem could be the most popular and probably the most likely hypothesis is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. A conjunction is when two or more, but usually two, planetary objects appear close to each other in the sky as if observed from Earth. So, Jupiter and Saturn orbit the Sun just like all of the other planets in our solar system, but every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn align in what is called a conjunction. All conjunctions are not equal. Most are unsymmetrical and barely even visible from Earth without a telescope. The conjunctions where Jupiter and Saturn align almost perfectly are extremely rare, and astronomers have dated back the last perfect conjunction to the Middle Ages. There's also going to be, fun fact, a conjunction tonight, December 21st, so keep your eyes peeled for something very bright in the sky. Another interesting factoid is that for the Middle Ages, the other conjunction that was dated was in 7 BC, and this is supposed to be when Jesus was born. Now, all of you Bible theologians may be thinking right now, why 7 BC? That's not exactly when he was born. At this point, it's important to remember that our humans, our sense of time and calendars have varied throughout the years. For example, the Gregorian calendar reform, it was proclaimed the day after October 4th, 1582, it would be October 15th, and then suddenly after October 4th in 1582, everyone said it was October 15th. Because of events in history like this, and the sheer scarceness of Jupiter and Saturn's semi-perfect planetary alignment, it is highly hypothesized that this rare, perfect conjunction that happened in 7 BC occurred on the night of Jesus' birth. A semi-perfect conjunction is an incredibly luminous sight to see. It creates a distinct bright dot in the sky that will remain visible for weeks. In other words, a semi-perfect alignment would be in the sky long enough for the Magi to have found Jesus using it. And at the time of Jesus' birth, the planet's convergence would have resulted in the brightest celestial object that was ever observed in human history, which would have been a welcome fit for a king. Christmas this year is rapidly approaching. And also, so is December 21st, 2020, which is actually today. So this year, as you sing carols with your family and celebrate and look up to the sky, look up to the convergence of Jupiter and Saturn and remember and see what it could have been on the day when Jesus was born. Merry Christmas and happy holidays.